Uh, hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. Uh, in the previous lecture, we looked at uh, this one of the standard tests for the sample mean, which is called the z-test. And uh, you may wonder why is it called the z-test and uh, it's very simple actually in some sense. The test statistic that we used in all, all those tests was the sample mean, right? You remember the hypothesis testing problem, the general framework is there are samples and then there is a null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis about the distribution of the samples. It could be one or the other and then you devise a test statistic, right, which is a function of the samples and the test statistic, statistic will have a distribution, okay. In the case of testing for the mean, the test statistic is always the sample mean. Now, when it is a sample mean, the sample mean has a normal distribution, roughly normal distribution. You can approximate it as a normal distribution, okay, even if it is not. So, uh, that is what you do. You take the sample mean and uh, you know that in any normal distribution you can do a small transformation and make it the z distribution which is the n01, the standard normal, okay. So, that is why any test you do on the sample mean, you, you might want to have a right sided test, left sided test, two sided test depending on what your hypothesis null and alternative are, your uh, significance level is always defined using the fc, okay. So, because your test statistic was uh, normal 0, 1, the significance level gets divided with, uh, defined with fc, right. You remember alpha will be, you know, 1 minus fc of something or, you know, fc of something itself if it is a left sided test or, you know, fc of something minus fc of something else if it is two sided test, okay. So, the thing to remember, okay, the most important thing to remember about hypothesis testing is the sequence, samples, hypothesis, test statistic and then a decision region, the acceptance regions or rejection region using that critical value and that depends on the test you are. If it is right sided type test, you will do one type of uh, region, left sided you will do another type, two sided you will do another type and then there is this formula for the significance level alpha in terms of the distribution of the test statistic and the critical value, right. So, that is that is the crucial formula, right. That formula comes from what distribution the test statistic takes and what uh, type of test you are doing, okay. If you understood this much, then there is no real confusion in this lecture, okay. If you did not understand this flow properly, every test now I describe in this lecture will be like something new to you. Oh, one more formula to remember, one more formula to mug up. While actually there is no formula, right, there is only the notion of the distribution of the test statistic. You will see actually I will say the same thing over and over and over again now. There is something called a t-test something called a chi-square test, something called a two sample z test, two sample f test. So, all of these things are new and new and new and if you do not understand the basic mechanism of how it comes, it will seem like, oh, this is a new one, I need to know this formula, this is a new one, I need to know this formula. Well, in reality, the only thing you need is the concept and flow of how this comes, okay. If, if, if you understand that, all these uh, equations will be really, really simple. You do not even have to remember anything, you only have to remember the test statistic and the distribution of it and everything else you can derive quite easily, okay. Of course, if you keep working on them long enough, you may remember them ultimately, but that is a different point of view, okay. So, keep this in mind as I go through these tests. I will go through them quite fast. I will just emphasize this angle on how there are samples, how there are two different hypotheses, how there is a test statistic and how there is this region in which you reject the null or accept the null and how that gives you a formula for the significance level and that is it. Okay, so, I will go through this at this level. Of course, you may also want to calculate power, okay. If power comes in, there will be power with respect to a simple alternative hypothesis. So, that power you calculate, again, it will be a function of the uh, distribution of the test statistic given the alternative hypothesis is true, right. So, we have done this calculation for the z test. You can do similar calculation for all of these tests also. I won't emphasize that too much. I will uh, let you think about it uh, as you go along. So, having given that pretty big introduction to what all these tests are, I, I want you to mainly carry this message with you. There is nothing to get scared about all the different equations and formula you will see. The flow for them is all the same except that in one or two points, the actual distribution changes, okay. But if you are the type who is going to just mug up formula without understanding where they came from, then I think it's it is going to be a bit harder for you. You have to think about how to uh, rationalize it and organize it clearly in your mind, okay. So, let us get started. So, before we begin, let me do a recap of normal samples and the statistics that result from them for different uh, descriptive statistics that we calculate, okay. You have x1 through xn being iid normal, 
mean mu variance sigma square. Throughout this lecture, I will more or less assume normal samples. Now, you should remember there is the CLT which tells you that, you know, if you take any descriptive samples, uh, statistic from the normal samples like mean or variance or something, you can expect normal like behavior, right. So, so we will we'll use that and justify, but I uh, will stick to normal samples in this lecture, okay. So, you have n, n iid normal samples, mean mu, variance sigma squared. Uh, the sample mean is something we have seen uh, so far over and over again in the z test. The sample mean has expected value equal to mu and uh, we know what the distribution of the sample mean is. It is normal with mean mu and variance sigma squared divided by n, right. So, I have shown a plot here. This is sigma, okay. Sigma equals root n. So, sigma squared is 1 by n. So, that is the plot here. So, so this is the uh, distribution of the mean. We know this already. And I have just shown here for n equals 1 and n equals 5 and n equals 10. You can see how uh, if you plot them all together on one on top of the other as n increases, uh, the variance is decreasing and the mean remains the same. So, you can see for uh, the blue is really spread out in terms of these are all PDFs. Okay, So, these are all PDF plots. Uh, so, you can see the blue is really spread out and then uh, the green and all that becomes uh, becomes a little bit more, you know, concentrated. So, these are PDFs, okay. So, now next comes the sample variance, okay. So, it has a slightly more complicated formula. It is uh, we denoted S squared, right. And uh, we do this uh, unbiased variance estimate 1 by n minus 1. Uh, x1 minus x bar squared, etc. So, you remember that formula, the expected value is sigma squared. Now, what about the distribution of s squared, okay. Uh, we have seen this result before long, 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 long ago. I am sure you have forgotten. Uh, so, uh, this is the big result about the distribution of the sample uh, variance, right. So, here is the, here is the, here is the big result. Uh, it says n minus 1 times s squared by sigma squared is this chi squared distribution. So, this distribution is called uh, chi squared with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Okay, complicated terminology. It is really uh, something that is there for historic reasons, maybe this degrees of freedom type uh, interpretation. But no, just this is called chi square distribution. This the symbol is actually chi. It's uh, uh, you know uh, Greek letter chi. So chi square distribution with um, n minus one degrees of freedom. Now you don't have to bother too much about what it is exactly. You can you can uh, you know if you go to uh, SciPy stats for instance, it will give you the PDF of chi square distribution. It will give you the CDF of chi square distribution. It will give you samples from chi square distributions if you want. It's not uh, very difficult to come up with what the PDF is. You can see the expression for the PDF if you like, for instance. Uh, we will we'll add this to the table that you will have in your formula table. So, do not worry about remembering the distribution. But it is good to get a sense of how the picture looks. So, notice this is n equals 1, right. This is n equals 1 and this is uh, n equals 5 and the green is uh, n equals 10, okay. So, as the degrees of freedom increase, so remember first thing that is different about chi squared is chi square takes only positive values, well normal distribution takes both negative and positive, chi square takes only positive values obviously right, this variance is positive, everything is positive here, so it will be positive and for n equals 1 you get like a exponential type thing and as n increases you have this kind of behavior right, so it, it is like sort of spread out, you get a big uh, spread in this distribution, so n minus 1 s squared by sigma squared has this big distribution, but, but usually you know if you look at s squared you are going to divide this by n, so, so everything gets uh, crushed down also, okay. So, it does concentrate in some sense, but because I am multiplying by n minus 1 on this side, you get this pure chi square types uh, distribution, okay. So, that is how the distribution looks, okay. Uh, here is the next uh, interesting little formula. It turns out this x bar and chi square are independent, uh, s square are independent, these two are independent, okay. Uh, so, it is a sort of a non-trivial result to show that these two are independent. Not only that, there is this really strange and very interesting relationship. Look at this formula, it says x bar minus mu divided by s, this s is the same s by the way, huh? it is actually the sample variance, it is a random variable. You take one random variable in the numerator, another random variable in the denominator and you take the ratio, you get something called the t distribution, okay. 
this is called the you know uh, t distribution or students t distribution it is called with uh, n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Look up the history of the students t distribution if you are interested in something like that it is a very very interesting story what the t distribution is okay. So, now the t distribution sort of looks so now this can take both positive and negative values okay t distribution takes both, both positive and negative values it sort of looks like the normal right okay. So, and it is also true uh, that it is closer and closer to normal. So, if you uh, you know it, it probably does not fall fast enough. So, so if you look at uh, you know n equals 5 and 10 they are all, all very close, uh, but it does not quite fall fast enough as the normal distribution it seems to be spread out a little bit more than the normal distribution only a little bit more not too much ok do not worry about uh, it spreading out uh, too much more. Uh, so, uh, so, so, so that is how the t distribution looks ok. So, it is sort of looks uh, close enough to normal as, as n goes to 100 and all you will see it will really be like the normal distribution it will come very very close to the normal distribution ok. So, so this uh, sort of gives you the picture of uh, what these distributions are and these, these distributions are good enough to remember ok you should remember that the sample mean is normal uh, what is the mean invariance and this n minus 1 s squared by sigma square is something called the chi square distribution sample variance goes as the chi squared and this x bar minus mu by s by root n. Now, remember this look at this other thing what is x bar minus mu by sigma by root n this is what this is normal 0 1 ok. So, remember that ok. So, this is a huge result we know this ok. This is normal 0 1 this is z right this is the z distribution. Okay. Now, what is the difference between these two guys? What is the difference? S instead of sigma. Okay. Sigma is the actual variance of the samples distribution variance. If you know the sigma, you put sigma instead of S here, you actually get the normal distribution, right? Normal distribution very concentrated, etc. Now, instead if you do not know the sigma in most cases you would not know the sigma you only have the samples right. From the samples if you are estimating the sigma as s sample variance square root and instead of sigma you use the s which is what you would do in practice right. Then you get the t distribution and this t distribution is this uh, you know slightly more elongated because you know because you are estimating the variance again it is not as good as knowing the variance. So, it's, it would not be normal it will be a little bit more spread out ok. But once n becomes 100 or so the variance is, variance is estimated so well that you will see it, it becomes close to the normal distribution ok. So, these are this is a good thing to remember this slide is a good slide for you to remember because this will help you as you look at the tests that are coming ok. In the tests that are going to come uh, in uh, you know t test uh, chi square test and uh, you know two sample uh, uh, z test two sample uh, F test and all that I mean similar sort of things will uh, show up and it is good to have a good idea of uh, what this uh, uh, normal samples and statistics are.